Welcome to Mind Over Matter, where we feature young Jamaicans who are shooting for the stars. I'm your host, Margaret Boyne. Hailing from Sivright Gardens, also called Cockburn Pen, my guest at 24 years old has recently been called to the bar. In other words, he's now officially an attorney at law. His story is one of determination and self-discipline, as law school is certainly not for the faint-hearted. He has reinforced the view that whatever your mind can conceive, you can achieve. My guest is Kemar Setal. Congratulations, Kemar. You have recently been called to the bar. So you are now officially an attorney at law. How do you feel knowing that you have finally ended the journey? Well, first of all, thank you very much and thank you for having me. It is a great feeling to know that there's no more school (laughs) and no more application to be called to the bar. I'm now an attorney. Right now, saying it, it has not sunk in as yet, but I guess it will take some time, but it is a really great feeling. All right, take us back a few weeks ago. What was that process like, being called to the bar? We hear it all the time, but we don't know what it entails. Okay, so to be called to the bar, we have to make an application to the General Legal Council because finishing law school doesn't mean that you're an attorney. So you have to make the application to be enrolled on the list of attorneys. So I had to make an application to the General Legal Council to get a certificate of enrollment and a qualifying certificate. After I got those, I had to meet certain requirements as well. After I got those, I had to make an application to the Supreme Court now in order to in order for the application to go before the court to actually be an attorney. So I had to file the application via what we call a fixed date claim form. We had to have an affidavit with the evidence that, yes, we have um, met the requirements um, laid down by the legal profession. Regarding that now, we had to have certain documents exhibited to the application. And we had to ensure that our applications are done perfectly to the T. Because if it is not done to the T, it will be bounced and we would not be called to the bar. (laughs) So that was part of the nerve wracking process. Also, we had to get an attorney to actually present the application to the court because we are not yet attorneys. So we did not have standing to address the court. So (laughs) during my process, it was going good so far until like two days before the bar calling when the attorney who should call me to the bar said to me that, hey, I don't think I'm going to be available. And I'm like, what? It's like two (laughs) days before. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So in order to change the attorney, we had to file what we call a notice of change of attorney. Before you can file that, you have to find another attorney. So we also had a time period within which that application can be filed and served on the general legal counsel. So I was freaking out (laughs) and another colleague of mine, she was freaking out as well because (laughs) the both of us were being called by the same attorney. Okay. So I was there pacing the floor in my room, thinking (laughs) what can be done, all of that. Then I'm trying to get to the attorney as again, was not getting to his phone. I'm like, what is this? (laughs) So eventually I sat down and I started to pray. And then I got some form of comfort. Then I called my friend and said, hey, don't worry about it. God brought us this far. He will not fail us. Mm -hmm. Literally like about 10 or 15 minutes after I said that to her, the attorney called me and said, guess what? The chief justice suspended the Klansman trial. So I will be available to do the the, the calling. And I'm like, look at that. Look at that. (laughs) (laughs) But it was really nerve wracking. The process was very lengthy. Mm-hmm. Oh, going to the general legal codes application, we had to get um, a police record. So my interview was, I think, the 26th of October at the general legal council. And also the police record was going to be ready on the 26th. Oh. <laughs> and I needed it before, before. the 26th. <laughs> and I'm like, what is this again? Yes. <laughs> I had to go to the police record office and literally beg. Mm -hmm. So good the supervisor understood 
what the situation is like. And she said, all right, the day before, come and I'll have it ready for you. And I said, all right, thank you very much. And that's how I got it in time. (laughs) (laughs) There's so many things, hiccups, and I'm like, what else can go wrong? (laughs) (laughs) Well, everything is right, no? And uh, But before you got there, though, you had to pass the bar exams. Now, I've always heard about this exam, like, you know, that it's it really difficult. How difficult was it? Take me, take me through that. All right. Trust me. <laughs> difficult <laughs> is an understatement. <laughs> so it's, law school was two years. So we had to do a set of bar exams the end of the first year, mm-hmm. then also the end of the final year. So... Starting law school face to face, it was going good and so forth. Then COVID came. So everything went online. This is the first time I'm ever having school online. Mm-hmm. I had to adjust to this. I don't think I liked it, but I had to do it. Right. So I'm a person who, in order to learn, I have to really see what's going on. Also have access to my teachers to say, all right, after class, I go to the office to say, all right, I didn't fully grasp this. Mm. Can you go over this with me? So not being able to do that, that was a challenge. Preparation for exams in the first year, it was rough because we didn't know when is exam. We didn't know the mode of exam. So we don't know how to prepare. Eventually exams were in July Leading up to the exam, I lost a cousin by murder. Mm. I lost an aunt by heart attack. A close friend of mine who my church sister and also a fellow member of the law school Mm. died from lupus like one month before exams. All of that was just playing on my mind. And I'm like, okay, I have to do exams. So what I did to motivate me is to say that, okay, I'm going to do this not for myself only, but I'm going to do this for her as well, because that was her final year, Mm -hmm. but my first year. So exams came, there were 24 hours, the exams were 24 hours, and I'm like... Entire day. (laughs) Entire day, and I'm like, what? What did we buy 24 hours? Do we have 24 hours to submit? (laughs) Or what? When I got the first exam paper and I'm like reading this, like eight pages of just facts. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I literally sat here where I'm sitting now yeah. <laughs> for the full 24 hours mm. having um, Pepsi mm-hmm. and Arizona mm-hmm. to keep me up from not falling asleep. My mother run into the room with food so that I can (laughs) eat while doing the exam. It was very torturing. But at the end of that, I remember in the first year, my final exam is like, I did not understand what was going on in the exam. And I got frustrated. I wanted to throw the laptop in the wall. (laughs) I just started to pace the floor. And I said, God, if you see where I'm going to fail, (laughs) give me a C. (laughs) And uh, I I just, right, because I'm saying, I just need to get past this. Yes. (laughs) And I'm like, okay. And I I submitted the assignment, the exam, same time. I didn't even look over it because I was just flustered. And uh, to tell the truth, that was my only C. (laughs) Oh, really? And I didn't feel any way. I said, thank you. Thank you, Lord. (laughs) Said. (laughs) Yes. Uh And I know. I was doing legal aid, um, 12 assignments this time, uh, uh, as well as mock trials, plus preparation for exams, preparation for classes. I was the class representative. So I had that leadership position dealing with as well. So it was just a lot. Legal aid was not easy because we had to be acting as attorneys, but we are supposed to be guided by another, uh, an actual attorney. But It is not the case that we can go to them for everything. We have Mm -hmm. to show competence, right? And at the end of that, we'll be assessed. It was a very rough road, rough journey during legal aid alone. And then after that, now to do exams in May now, I was doing accounts for the first time as a course. And I'm like, I'm going to be a lawyer. Why do I need to do accounts? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Then after realizing that, hey, 
you're gonna someday start a firm mm. you're gonna need to know how the accounting is being run because yes you're gonna get an accountant but you need to know if the accountant is robbing you or not <laughs> <laughs> so i get the importance mm. eventually and accounts is something that you need to be see seen done on a board or something we were online and i'm like i'm not getting this <laughs> Honestly, I shall confess, a lot of my accounting classes, I was in my bed sleeping. <laughs> but after that, I said, okay, I'm going to watch the recording. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to watch YouTube videos. I'm going to get a textbook, read a textbook. And I also consulted my friend, um, one of your previous guests, Paul Hyman. Who, oh, yes. Know, that genius <laughs> in our house. Yes. <laughs> and we would have some Zoom meetings, him explaining some accounting things with me. I would do work, send it to him, and he will mark it rigorously. Mm -hmm. And I would say to him, even though we're friends, yes. mark it and cost me. <laughs> and he definitely did. did. <laughs> he took you up on the offer. <laughs> right? Eventually, I got an A in accounts. And I'm like, look at that. Yes. Even though final year was very rough as well, I had my best grades ever in final year. Mm -hmm. My best grades ever. Almost made a principal on a roll, but you know, I am grateful. Mm -hmm. But you know, I wanted it. But yeah, I missed the principal on a roll by two A's. Just mm -hmm. two A's. Oh, that was very good, man. So you're from Sirite Gardens, otherwise called Cockburn Pen. So how do you feel knowing that um, your circumstances didn't dictate to um, where you're heading or where you're going? I'm really grateful that regardless of the situation, I am where I'm at and where and I see a positive light as to where I'm going. Um, I'm happy that I... I'm able to do this because this is not only impacting me or my family, it is impacting the entire community. Mm -hmm. um, I was featured in the Jamaica Observer and uh, on the online article, there were so many comments reg um, from persons from the community saying that they are inspired, mm -hmm. they are motivated. They now have hope that uh, and also they now know that it is not where you're from and mm -hmm. where you're from does not define where you're going. So I am really grateful that I could be the person to make this happen. Where I, from the community, it was not easy as well because there were a lot of noise regarding mm -hmm. studying. Even during exams, I live next door to a garage. There are times <laughs> when they're working on trucks and the trucks are being revved and I'm <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> what is going on that is like throughout the days and right. then in the night snow music in the playing. night snow music playing from <laughs> bars because i live like a house away from a bar oh, man. then you had these bikers just on the road with the bikes <laughs> up and down i'm like going crazy <laughs> so, so how are you <laughs> able how are you able to remain focused through all of that okay i had to set a time where it would be less noisy mm -hmm. like for example late in the night after 12 mm -hmm. midnight even at that point you will somewhat have noise even though they are curfew <laughs> you have the bike because they're still and all of that so what i had to do is just try to be calm mm -hmm. and also try to block out mm -hmm. the noise so i'm a person thankfully who can study with music so I'm not listening to the music, but the music is just blocking out everything else, right? So I had to adapt to that. And yeah, sometimes I had to go to a friend's house to do some studying. I had to go by UE campus to just get some work done, go to the library. Well, before COVID, I could stay at school. I would be at school like minutes to 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. And I'll be leaving school after 9 p.m. And when I get home, I would just shower, eat, eat, and back in the books. Acts like at 30 minutes mm -hmm. and then back in the books until like four o'clock to wake up back 5.30. It was hell. <laughs> but um, you're from a community that's, um, that we call a marginalized community. So every day you're seeing how the poor, how their rights are being violated. Did that aid you in, you know, deciding to do law? Indeed. 
Indeed, I was actually a victim per se of um, my rights trying to be violated by a law enforcer, a police officer. I recall the day I was coming from UAE as I came off the bus on Spanish Town Road. I realized that there was an accident at my friend's house on the main road. So I went over there to, to see what was going on. So eventually, one of the persons in the accident died. So the police had to come and cordon off the area and so forth. I was at my friend's gate. Mm -hmm. and, and that was actually a crash site as well. So, you know, I expected that they would want us to not be in the area there. So I'm saying, okay, they're coming over now. So I'm expecting, you know, the police officer to be respectful, regardless of who you're speaking with. To say, hey, explain what was going on and to say, um, we'd like to for you to go on the inside or go on the outside of the, the yellow tapes. The police officer was like, move, move, wanna move. That's not how you talk to people. We're civilized people here, regardless of the community that you are at. He was like, yeah, what, you're a village lawyer? You're a village lawyer? <laughs> so I'm saying, I said to him, well, it seems yes. like I'm doing a good job because yes. I didn't tell you that. <laughs> And you picked it up. So I don't know if because I was not be, being vulgar and disrespectful, mm -hmm. felt threatened and he held onto his gun, mm -hmm. wanted to pull his gun. And I'm like, okay. And I read his name, his badge number. And like I would say, okay, Mr. Brown, badge number X, Y, and Z. I see you. I see your actions. So he knew that, oh, this boy have yeah, sense. Yeah, have sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One, I believe it's his supervisor came over to him and moved him to another area and started to apologize to me. Mm. And I said, that's fine. That's fine. Um, I understand the situation, but I expected better behavior. Mm -hmm. And like right after that, when the, his supervisor moved him to another area, a vehicle was coming and they were detouring the vehicles. So the, the, the passenger in the vehicle said, officer, what's going on? Instead of telling the, the, the man what was going on, he told the man about his mother. <laughs> what? A police officer. Mm. Right? And there are many times I'm in the community and see just because you're men or males mm -hmm. in the inner city, mm -hmm. the police just say, Oi, jump in another in mm -hmm. van back, mm -hmm. gone, gone to lock up areas. But what? Little do we know that they need reasonable suspicion to even search your person, right? So because one, we don't know the law and we don't know our rights. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is one main thing, knowing our rights. That is one main thing why I said, no, I need to be an advocate mm -hmm. for those who don't know the law and don't know their rights. I need to be the voice of the silenced. Mm -hmm. That is why I said, I need to be a lawyer because I was con conflicted as to whether to be a lawyer or a doctor. But I said, you know what? It is a lawyer. <laughs> but um, I think I read somewhere that you were offered a scholarship while you were at Calabar High School to do medicine. And so you, I, you didn't accept it. I was in, I believe, lower six at the time, lower six form. And uh, I saw this scholarship being advertised on Instagram at the St. George's University in Grenada. And I'm like, oh, let me apply because I'm a person, funnily, who always doubt myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I said, let me apply to see if I would be accepted or, you know, I applied not looking forward to a response or an acceptance. <laughs> like at one day I went into my email and I saw an email from the university and they're saying that I was granted a scholarship, full scholarship. And I'm like, what? <laughs> when I read further. It said to do medicine. I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't know how to react. I didn't even tell my parents or anything. <laughs> I silently told one of my friends at school and he was so happy. And he was like, so why aren't you happy? I'm like, yeah. because I don't know if I really, <laughs> really want, want to do to medicine. Do yeah. <laughs> then I was there and, you know, it was like after I started law at UWE, I actually told my mother and she was like, <laughs> yeah, seriously, <laughs> she could have but, saved all of this money. <laughs> right. But I also did not just um, decline like that. I prayed about it okay. and I asked God for some signs as to whether I should do medicine or law and trust mm -hmm. me. 
I did not get signs. I got billboards mm. <laughs> as to why I must use law over medicine. And I respectfully declined and I thank them for accepting and considering it and all of that. But I think law is what I was destined to do. Mm-hmm. But you, you, you talk about God and prayer a lot. How um, important is your faith? Well, you? Trust me, without my faith in God, I would not be here today. Trust me. I would not be, probably I would not be alive. Probably I would not be an attorney today. I say alive because in 2016, um, August 20, I was in America. This was like two days before I coming back to Jamaica. And I was heading home about after 5 a.m. with my cousins. And I was in a terrible accident. The vehicle was right mm-hmm. off. And yeah, I was in a, like, I, I saw my life flash before me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, when the vehicle eventually stopped, because it almost turned over. When the vehicle actually stopped, I was like, thank you, Jesus. And then I started to check on my cousins. I realized that we are all okay. We came out of the vehicle, like I was not in pain or anything. And eventually when the police came and were giving the reports, I started to feel some back pain. And I'm like, okay, what is this now? When a passerby saw what happened, it was on the highway. And they stopped and the lady was like, are you guys okay? Are you guys okay? So all I could say at the time was check the other vehicle because the other vehicle was just flipping, flipping. And then it ran and bounced in a wall like a ball. And all I could see was airbag and smoke in the other vehicle. And I was like, check them. Then the lady went over there and when she, I don't know if it was her who pulled the door. Mm -hmm. But I heard she cried out and said, Jesus Christ. I'm like, oh, Lord, he's dead. Little did we know. When we looked, the door opened. The man walked out of the car, not even limping, no blood, nothing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it is only God. So he was going through some things, got wasted, fell asleep while driving. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, like right before the accident, my mother called me and said, where are you? So we said, we're like five minutes to exit the highway. She said, okay. And literally as I hung up the phone and my cousin said, who is, he couldn't even say, who is that? Mm -hmm. As he said, who is here? Boom, the car. And I'm like, that could have been the last conversation with my mother. It is only God why I'm alive today. Why I say God why I'm an attorney today is like, there is no, there was never a moment where I thought, oh, I can do this alone. Like there are many nights, sleepless nights tearful nights like a lot of hidden tears in this journey i'm telling you (laughs) like i feel frustrated i'm saying should i be doing this or should i give up then i say no i've reached too far i Mm -hmm. cannot give up on on this dream because what i have the silence to be the voice of Mm -hmm. as well as my parents are spending so much money i cannot let all of that go down the drain another reason i have a little brother he's watching my every step so if i give up what kind of example would i be setting for him Mm -hmm. so i had all of that and i prayed again about it and i'm like okay after prayer i get some for some form of comfort again and calmness Trust me, my faith in God is why I'm here today. You mentioned um, finances. You're, you're from a poor background. How were you able or how did your parents, how they were able to, you know, pay that school fees over a million per year? Right. So my parents, they had to take on more tax, tasks to earn more mm-hmm. from what they, the little that they were doing. They had to join partners to just to ensure that at that point in time when the tuition is due, they With had the money there, right? <laughs> so as well as my brother overseas would try to assist as possible mm-hmm. and other family members would try to, you know, chime in as best mm-hmm. as possible. And that I am so grateful for it because no, I do not have student loan to pay back. So I'm really grateful mm-hmm. for all of that. You can spend some time and thank all the persons, you know, who have contributed to, to your journey to where you are now? Well, as I said, my parents, mm-hmm. not only financially, um, my brother, Mark, who is overseas, my aunts, Marcia, Sharon, my aunt, Trinita, 
um, Judy, Auntie Judy, like there are so much, much of them, Uncle um, Ian, like there are so many of them who not only financially, but call mm-hmm. to check in, motivate me. And not only family members regarding motivation, friends, as I mentioned Paul before, mm-hmm. he was always my number one supporter. I have three other friends. Um, the person who wrote the article, the mastermind okay. behind my observer article, <laughs> okay. Romardo. <laughs> yes, we have we are coming from Calabar as well. Mm-hmm. So he is always there for me. Um, two other journalists who I met at UE, Jordana, Nora Gay. Like they have always been there for me. Mm-hmm. Speaking about journalists I met at, uh, at UE, throughout my degree program at UE, I did not stay at the law faculty. I did all my studying at, at Carmack. Oh. <laughs> right. Because oh. that's where my friends were. Okay. <laughs> to the point where like the lecturers they at thought you were doing knows me. Oh. Well, they thought I was doing that initially. Yes. They knows me. Like I even <laughs> have co- communication with one of the this one of the senior lecturers there mm. to date. <laughs> it the, the great Faye Ellington. She mm. was one of the persons who said she was trying. She said to me that um I should look into going to entertainment law because mm. I'm always at Karma. And uh, I sat into many of her classes. I also one day I was in her class and she was giving her class a test. And I was sitting at the back of the class because you know they are doing the test. And she came and sat beside me and she said, Kemar, <laughs> you have been to many of my classes. I think you should do the test. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> What is this? <laughs> I thought she was joking. No. When I looked, she had the, the exam paper. Okay. And I and did, did the exam. The exam. <laughs> I was like, okay. So it happened that the day of returning the exam scripts, mm-hmm. she, um, I was in the class. And I didn't like it, but she publicly said to the class, you know, a lot of you should be ashamed. Shamed. I have a law student here. <laughs> Who got more than many of you? <laughs> yes, so I actually passed the exam and I got more than many of the actual yes. students. And trust me, that did not make a lot of the students like me. And you know, <laughs> why did she do that? <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Kemar, they, they would say that um, talent and intelligence is not enough. What are some of the other factors you think that has led to your success so far at law school? Well, self-discipline mm-hmm. to have that. Coming back to where I'm from, I had to have the discipline. And I recall many times family members want to go to parties and they're like, Kepar, we are go party, and I'm like, no, I have to study, mm-hmm. and they're like, but you're gonna pass anyway, and I'm like, no, <laughs> no, if I don't study, I'm not gonna pass. I'm passing because I study. <laughs> so you know, I had to know that I could not um, give in to that. I don't want to say peer pressure because I don't believe in peer pressure mm-hmm. because you should have a mind for yourself. There mm-hmm. can be pressure. But you don't have to give in to the pressure, mm-hmm. right? So I don't believe in peer pressure. Also, I could have taken up guns instead mm-hmm. of going to law school or pursuing education. I had friends who were giving me weed mm-hmm. to smoke. And I was like, mm-hmm. no, that's not me. And just the other day, one of those friends me- messaged me and saying that how proud he is mm. and he respects me so much because he remember trying to give me that weed and I was so determined that I not, I'm not going to take it. Mm. Grew for me even more by that. Mm. So self-discipline is one. Having the right persons in your circle. Mm-hmm. Motivating myself because if, you are, if you don't have self-motivation, motivation from others will not be impacting mm. Right. So I had to have that as well. And I had to set goals. So as I said before, one of the most important aim I had was to ensure that I did not waste my parents' money. Mm-hmm. And you didn't. <laughs> I recall when I got my results for final exams, when I actually saw that my first utterance was, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I did not waste my parents' money. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, so how how um how are your parents um taking this all in? You know what are, what are the reactions from them? Like, <laughs> he even more happy than I am. Yes. <laughs> Call my first article when I just passed the final bar exams. Um, my father ensured that he got a, a copy of the, the article for himself. And he literally walked from house to house <laughs> in the community. In the community. And showed the article. Yes. And I was like, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> but I know that it was how proud he is. Yes. My mother... When I got the results and I called my mother, I was at work, I called my mother and I said, Mommy, um, me get results, me pass everything. She was like, E, you pass everything. So I said, <laughs> yes. She was like, congrats, my boy. And that's, she just got silent. <laughs> so I was like, that's, that's it. it. <laughs> Did I know that she was just so eager to get off the phone to call the world? <laughs> <laughs> Like literally, yeah. I was like hung up the phone. Like there were so many calls coming in, and I'm like, okay, no, oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, what kind of law will you be practicing? Well, um, as an attorney at law, I am qualified to practice any area, no. but it all depends on the firm I am at currently. Mm-hmm. So, the firm I'm at now, I'm at CJ Mitchell and Company. Mm-hmm. I am understudying mr paul gentles who trust me is one of my role models mm-hmm. like i met him on my first court attendance which is a requirement for law school and not just how he is as an attorney but as a person mm-hmm. like there unfortunately there are some attorneys who you know try to say oh i was in this position and i didn't have anybody to guide me so you mm-hmm. need to learn on your own mm-hmm. he he was not and he is not like that he ensured, like, every time he rose to approach, address the court and he sits, he was like, Kemar, I just did X and I did X because X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. Right? So he ensured that oh, he was okay. teaching. Mm-hmm. As an attorney now and going to court with him, he still does it. Mr. Mitchell as well, CJ Mitchell, he does it as well. So it's just a great environment. So <clears throat> being at that firm, I am currently practicing criminal law. Mm-hmm. So um, they do also some form of civil litigation as well. But right now I am in, I'm understudying Mr. Gentis who only focuses on criminal law currently. Okay. Okay. So do you eventually want to have your own law firm? Yes. Um, <laughs> in due time. Yes. Um, I'm gaining the experience mm-hmm. because having your own firm, being a sole practitioner, as well as having your own firm, It's a rough journey. So you want to ensure that you have enough experience. And with experience, you can you can earn clientele and all of that. So you have to at this stage, I have to think about the long run. Right. So I intend to start my own firm um, one day. Also, Paul is so adamant that we (laughs) need to have a firm where he does accounting consultation <laughs> while I do the law part, so, you know. So have it all it, worked out. Right. <laughs> so it is in the it is in the my mind for the making. So before we close, what what message do you have to leave for the youths, especially the youths in the inner city, who you know feel say them not have an opportunity, who feel say them can't come out, you know? Right. Like first of all put God first in everything. Mm -hmm. Believe that it is possible. My favorite quote is, nothing is impossible because if you look at the word, the word itself says, I'm possible, right? Mm -hmm. So everything is is possible. Also, I would like to say to them that go after any goal that you want to achieve, right? There is this song, I don't remember its name, but I recall a line in it saying that purse, basically saying that pursue every dream that you have, because you don't know which one of those dreams will make you succeed. Right. Mm -hmm. So do not feel as if all hope is gone because of where you're from. No, where you're from does not define who you are, nor does it define where you are going. Mm -hmm. I'm a, a, a product of someone who 
have basically defined the odds mm-hmm. of a stereotypical inner city, not only person, but an inner city male. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And I have taken on the duty of mentoring students, mentoring persons, so that they know that, hey, this is possible. You can do this. Mm -hmm. You can reach here. If you have that dream, let it be a reality by acting on it. Mm -hmm. Right? So, yes, my that's my advice to you and as i said put god first in everything with god anything is possible it was great talking to you kemar and uh, i think i would like to say that um i hope um you you'll be my attorney sometime <laughs> in the future but i said no not no criminal law business no, well <laughs> um, criminal law. <laughs> <laughs> well in the future um <laughs> Well, I still can practice any area. So, you yes, know, if you have yes. your, your conveyance in matter, you yes. know, and all of those type of matter, yes, you can reach out. <laughs> so it's not only criminal law. And also, you know, as I said, being in the criminal arena doesn't mean that you are guilty of something. Mm, it co- all co- yeah. It's being violated mm-hmm, again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So you can be the per- the most perfect citizen Mm -hmm. and you come in not in conflict with the law but you are in the system because Mm -hmm. what your rights are being violated right yeah that's true yeah man but i hope that won't have my eyebrow right right. (laughs) knock knock wood (laughs) right man it was great having you i I, i'm grateful (laughs) that you reached out to me you considered having me as well i am very thankful for that thank you again (laughs) Okay. <laughs>